So this is the uh, Ruby Bob by uh, led by Antonio Tercera. Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. So this is the Ruby Bob. Uh, we are going to discuss our plans and uh, actions for the Jesse release. I think uh, before anything we can at least uh, be aware of the good work we did with the Wheezy release. So uh, we had uh, we decided to change the uh, a lot in the packaging of Ruby libraries and applications. We uh, wrote a new packaging helper based on the H instead of the old one based on CDBS, and we had to convert a lot of packages. And then you can see here with this uh, green line that we did a very good work. So. By the, the time Weezy was released, we had uh, 878 packages converted to not only the, the new packaging helper, but also to, to the, the new naming scheme we, uh, we created. So we had usually, before we had libfoo-ruby, and now we have ruby-foo, which looks like the Python scheme, and it's, well, it Everyone in the team thought it was a better naming scheme for libraries. Okay, and then, yeah, so we are, we should be proud of this, and now we have to keep on the good work for the Jesse release. So now we, uh, Cedric created a nice uh, to-do list for the Jesse release, and then I, I, Organize that page in, in terms of uh, status, uh, what's the item that has to be done, and then we are going over each item here in this buff and try to get uh, volunteers to carry the work and, uh, and discuss briefly each item. So when we do, when we say uh, a volunteer to carry the work, doesn't does not mean that the person has to do all the work by by themselves. It's just the one responsible for making sure it happens. So it's more than encouraged to for people to seek help for each task of those. So yeah. First item in the in the agenda is the Ruby 1H removal. So Ruby 1H is uh unsupported upstream already. So upstream dropped support for that version and we don't have any kind of upstream support anymore. So we need to drop that from Jesse's app. Uh, it's, it's still available on Wheezy, but the, the idea is that we're not going to have Ruby 1H uh, on Jesse. So then we have a couple of action items on that front. First, to drop the support on Jim to Deb, which was, which is our package helper. This is done in Git, so we are just waiting for some more information about what fails without uh, Ruby on H support to upload in the, into the archive. Um, that's uh, with me already. And then we have to identify packages with a hard dependency on Ruby on H and uh, file bugs. Make sure people know that we are removing Ruby on H and uh, during that conf I already did a small part of this with so I tried to make sure I could remove Ruby 1H from my system. So I already fixed a couple of packages that were unnecessarily depending explicitly on Ruby 1H. And now we have to catch all the others and file bugs. So uh, if anyone is volunteer to do that, please put your name into the document, in the Gobi document. Uh, which, by the way, is debconf13 slash bof slash ruby on gobi.debian.org. Uh, so the next item, or if you are not on gobi, you can uh, tell us on IRC or here, and I will put your name up for it. And uh, then th there's the work of tracking the non leaf packages. So stuff that I is central to the archive, like, like uh, LibSC Linux has a Ruby binding, so obviously we can't remove LibSC Linux. Uh, the KGE bindings are still building only for Ruby 1H, so we, we have to make sure that we don't uh, 
make sure that those packages are fixed. And then if there are only uh, leaf packages left, so you can just request them to be removed if nobody fixed them in time. Yeah, special case here is a KDE Ruby, KDE Ruby packages are still 1H only. Uh, then we have to identify the package that are Ruby on H1 and throw them away after we give some time to for people to fix them and then request removal of Ruby 1H. I mean, I I'm not sure we need to do that in that order, but uh, at least we have to make sure core stuff is not removed because of Ruby 1H. So one idea here, one uh, that I would like opinions is whether we want to add lynch and checks for packages depending uh, explicitly on, us on Ruby 1H or even in specific Ruby versions. So we should, at this point, we should not be, a, maybe we should not be allowing packages that require a specific Ruby version to work. So any opinions on that? Get the microphone. <coughs> Maybe it uh, depends on Ruby 1.8 should be a Lintian error and depends on the specific Ruby version should be a Lintian warning or something. Okay, let's, yeah, let's, that sounds good. We should also add a Lintian check to for the old naming uh, schema. Sorry? Yeah. Is that all right? I hope it is. Yeah, that's messed up the table a lot, but okay. What Gunnar says on ISC is that uh, specific Ruby versions can be a pain, but sometimes it works just fine. And interpreter versions last, uh, last up for several years, so he would not suggest dropping altogether support for in interpreter versions. So not, not having multiple versions at the same time, like Perl does. I think you guys can read that from the back. So Gunnar, uh, we can have multiple versions, but yeah, okay. So if a package depends on Ruby 191 only, we should not drop it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm not proposing to drop them. I just think we should at least warn people. Yeah, I think. No, no, I'm not. I'm not suggesting dropping specific version support. It's just that uh, uh, every package that has a strict dependency on a specific version makes our job of adding support for new versions harder, and makes dropping that version in the future hard as well. So my idea is, yeah, m maybe we should allow them and just but keep a legion warning there, make, uh, telling the maintainer that that's going to make his life harder and our life harder as well. For the old naming, shouldn't it be an error? Should be an error? I think so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if, if you guys can take notes, it's better because I have to keep the flow here. Okay, I think, is the, is the, does anyone else have another point in the Ruby 1H removal? Concerns? Questions? I think it's clear that we you can't maintain it anymore, right? So, okay, let's go. Okay, so next step is other interpreters. So we have a couple of items here. 
We, will ha we have Ruby 2, which is mostly done in Git. I'm just finishing the, fin the last packaging bits to upload, especially with regards to multi-arch. So Ruby 2 is going to have multi-arch uh, support. Uh, the gem 2 dev support is uh, done in Git. So in the Git version of gem 2 dev is already built for Ruby 1.9 and Ruby 2 and does not build for Ruby 1.8 anymore. Uh, we have to file bugs against packages that fail to build with the new uh, gem 2 dev plus Ruby 2. Uh, during dev camp, uh, uh, David Suarez uh, helped us with a rebuild and then we have the results there. And it would be nice to have someone to go over the results and file the uh, appropriate bugs. Uh, so one question about that is, what is the state that we want in Jesse? Do we want Ruby 2 plus Ruby 1.9.3? Or do we want only Ruby 2? OK. Do you have an answer? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So my idea is to probably make Ruby two the default, but still keep Ruby one nine, and then for Jesse plus one, remove Ruby one nine. Uh, that's my initial idea. I don't know how long um, Ruby one dot nine is supported by upstream for security re support reasons. My impression is, was that uh, Ruby 2 was closer to Ruby 1.9.3 than Ruby 9.9.3 from Ruby 1.8. So it might make sense to just uh, drop it as soon as uh, we have reasonable Ruby 2 support. It makes our life much easier also for the uh, for stable release. Mm -hmm. that makes well, the, then the problem is. Uh, we don't have a freeze date, date yet, but it's likely to be not too far away, actually. Yep. So, well, something like uh, beginning of the summer of next year, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think let's think about it. In the, I think at least making Ruby to the default should be a goal. We can even add here. Okay. Uh, okay, we stop it. Okay, after the filling the filing the bugs, uh, we have also tracked the track bugs against packages that fail to build from source with the Ruby two, which shouldn't be too many. Uh, from this rebuild, we did uh, we had five hundred something packages and more or less one hundred failed to build. But I suspect that most of them was because the lack of Ruby 1.8. So because uh, the difference between Ruby 1.9 and Ruby 2 is a lot smaller and than the between Ruby 1.8 and Ruby 1.9, so the transition should be a lot smoother. OK, so yeah. We also have other interpreters like Rubinius. I did uh, initial packaging, should be fine, but it's probably already outdated. I didn't have too much time to give to that because of the main interpreters. So if uh, maybe I will do, but if someone wants to take it, please do it. Uh, we also have, have JRuby, which is uh, horribly outdated. Uh, maybe someone should, could help talking to the Java uh, so for uh, Ruby News, is it still relevant? Because it doesn't seem to be maintained upstream anymore. The it last release is from not? 2001. 
Uh, 2011. 11, yeah. 11, yeah. Or maybe it's just that they do everything in Git and... <laughs> they don't even release Star Wars anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. these cool okay, guys. The commits from today <laughs> in Git. Yeah. Yeah, you know, release are like... Nobody does release anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, th I think Rubinius is, is nice because it has... Uh, it's based on LLVM, so it has a uh, Git compiler and lots of cool features that are probably a lot useful, but yeah. And also we have to check the situation of JRuby. So JRuby currently doesn't use the Ruby package at all. It has its own library path that doesn't use the, uh, the Debian package. So we need to, yeah, I, we, we need to Yeah, so Gunnar asks if it's how horrible it would be to support Rubinus together with the main interpreters. Um, so all those are supposed to be compatible. So actually, the Rubinus guys were the guys who started uh, Ruby spec, which is kind of a unit test for Ruby implementations, which is a, a the main Ruby implementation also used that today. So it's supposed to be compatible, so we should not have any problems, even with, with C extensions, so the API should be the same, and it should work. So as long as someone does the work, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it, but as long as someone does the work, it should be maintainable. Okay. Uh, any more uh, issues or concerns about new interpreters? So Dave, David Suarez is actually interested in JRuby and is going to take up that work. Nice, thank you. Uh, cool. Yeah, next up is to finish the transition. So we, we did a, a really good job, but we didn't, we were, weren't able to do a uh, transition of all packages. So there are still packages building with the old packaging helper and using the, the old naming scheme of libfoo-ruby. And we have to either bring them to the Ruby team to, uh, to finish the transition or NMU them or even remove them from the archive if they are not useful and don't have, don't have any reverse dependencies. So it would be nice to have someone to look at, it, at that. And also, we <laughs> at this point, we should probably publish, actually publish our policy, which was written and it should be fine but uh, we never went into the trouble of actually publishing it somewhere in the Debian.org website or something. It would be nice to have someone else to look at that, but uh, yeah, so yeah, we are using DocBook and that stuff, and I think there are a lot of, lots of better options for writing in a maintainable way. Yeah. Any comments on this item for finishing the transition? Any doubts, any questions? Oh, Paul Van Tilburg is still here. Hello. Mm. We have had some people following you on IRC. Uh, yeah, so Paul, if you could re uh, reassume the work of on the Ruby policy, it would be fine. It would be nice. Or at least take it up. Uh, okay. Next item is gentle dev improvements. 
So this is both uh, regular maintenance. So there are com some bugs there. Uh, most of them wish list bugs that we have to take care of to either fix them or mark the ones that are not not feasible with one fix. And it, this is a nice opportunity to get new people to maintain the packaging helper, to reduce the bus factor. So today is mostly me doing the maintenance. It would be nice to have other people. Uh, I am willing to mentor anyone who takes that, wants to do that. Uh, there's also a to-do file in the Git repository, which should be also a, a good source of ideas for improvements. Uh, there is a low-hanging fruit to integrate auto package tests and have our packages uh, with runtime tests. So currently, gen devs we run unit tests uh, against the build package, but we can, with a very small change, we can make it run against the installed version. So you would gain uh, support for auto package tests and the, the entire infrastructure that's going to be created around that for automatic test migra testing migrations and stuff like that. And uh, we also help Q QA a lot. So, uh, well, I, I am willing to mentor anyone who wants to do anything gentle deb. Uh, We also have a, here another item, automatically build and ship developer docs. Yeah, it's a nice feature as well, so anyone. Uh, if nobody takes it, I probably end up in my hands, but it would be nice to, to have people to, to help with that. Uh, does anybody in one has, another, has other wishes or complaints against Gen2Dev? No? Okay. Uh, okay, now we have some more social items, not so much uh, technical ones, but still stuff we need to do. So uh, first, coordination points. Uh, I think it would be nice if we organized the uh, Ruby Sprint. I, uh, maybe not periodic, but at least one sprint, uh, uh, s some reasonable time before the freeze, so we can actually do uh, important changes. Uh, so uh, Lucas suggested doing together with Fosdem, um, close to Fosdem. Uh, we also have the recent recently announced UK mini DevConf, so we maybe could do that there as well. And uh, we would, is there someone uh, willing to organize that? No, not you, but uh, I think the in Paris is usually uh, the place that uh, takes sprints, right? Yes, there's a venue you can quite easily use in Paris. But uh, Cédric is in Paris as well. <laughs> well, I'm not in Paris, but Cédric is in Paris, so. <laughs> okay. Anyone volunteers to organize a sprint? Well, let's let, okay. For a, sprint, <coughs> for a sprint to be efficient, we would have to focus on something. What, what do you have in mind? Um, okay, probably making sure everything works with Ruby 2. So right now we have we have 100 packages that fail with without Ruby 1.8 and with Ruby 2. And then once we we know exactly what's the situation, then we can probably f uh, focus on making sure stuff works with Ruby 2. But uh, I also think that the volunteer who takes up this task should also uh, propose a focus and I think we can uh, 
Right now, I don't know exactly what the focus should be, but I think in uh, one or two months, we, we will be able to know what we need, we, what would be helpful to focus on in this sprint. Are you volunteer to organize? I mean, I, I could, uh, depending on when. But Paris is not the best for me, but I can. I mean, like, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, I think uh, organizing involves uh, deciding on the, play on the venue, so. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Then bugging people. Yeah, yeah. it's, mo it's mostly coordination work and yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, like making sure uh, uh, figuring out how, how many resources we need to fly people there or, to, I mean, for myself it has, it has to, fly, to be flying because there's no other way to cross the Atlantic, but yeah. Or as Gunnar says on IRC that we have a non-geocentered uh, sprint. Yeah. So just meet on IRC during a week and yeah, it could be that as well. have focused uh, yeah, communication uh, and development. Uh, that works, but I think a, a presidential meeting is a lot more uh, productive, yeah. but yeah. Also for real, it's like I can, if I'm with people working on Ruby stuff, I can like focus on Ruby stuff. Otherwise, you have all my life and so many volunteer stacks, you know, yeah, bugging yeah, you exactly. every single day. Come on, fix this server. Yeah. Do that. So I, I'd rather, I mean, if, if it's like, like, if half of the people can, can be in Paris and we can fly you over to Paris, then I mean, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next item is organize uh, monthly meetings. Uh, so yes, uh, two people already said that we need those. It would be nice, and I think we it's good to have. So and and volunteers to do that to organize meetings. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, so yes, uh, and then I, I will propose in the mailing list some format for the meetings and uh, some way of doing it that makes it uh, the more productive as possible. Okay. Yeah, so then we come to the last item, which is, I call it outreach. It's somehow related to lots of discussions we had during DevConf about getting new people and uh, making sure they know their way through the team tools and practices. And uh, it would be nice to have someone to coordinate an initiative for getting new people. And probably that should be coordinated with the, uh, with the general Debian mentor initiative. So basically it would be someone to talk to Ashish and uh, start doing something about this. Lucas has the comments. Yeah, so I, I think that for many of the things listed on that wiki page, uh, there are um, issues that, uh, well, it's easy to throw a lot of quite inexperienced people at them. Uh, so, yeah, we should clearly try to uh, get people involved through that process. And it worked quite well in the past. If you look at the Ruby team three years ago, uh, it's great to see that there are, I don't know, something like 12 people at, uh, uh, on the <laughs> on the Gobi document. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think I feel that uh, at least uh, reviewing packages today is under as uh, little manpower than it had before. So, yeah, maybe we just, yeah, maybe maybe we already just. We already have a good in, in incoming flux of people, and they just want to make sure that the, those people don't get, uh, that those people do get answers for the package. And yeah, yeah, Cedric saying that we already have many ref RFS mails on the list, yeah. Yeah, you guys are right. Maybe we, should, we just need more people to review packages. So even those who are not DDs yet can do that. 
So please, if you already maintain packages, and uh, please help. Uh, please help with that. And then we uh, there is a PR issue we need to ah uh, yeah maybe uh, do some PR about the state of Ruby in Debian. I was just uh, uh, me and Luna were discussing this during the hike about uh, and then I, I had a crazy idea of creating a, a live inst live slash install DVD to demonstrate Ruby on Debian. That that would come with a basic desktop system, or depending on the level of bike shedding, we could do one for each major desktop system, uh, and then coming to coming with already everything you need for developing Ruby. So good uh, text editors, all the tools, rails, and everything. Then that and that that's also somehow influenced by the. It talks about uh, blends and how they help bring people. I think the Ruby team already has some history of bringing people into Debian, and then maybe that could also help. I don't know if there's someone willing to do that. Anybody has any comments on that? It's just a five minutes job. You just need to know what packages you want, and that's it. And the rest you can clone the uh, official image configurations and just add your packages, and you're done. So, if you know if you know what packages you want, you can just tell me, and I'll, I'll help you along. So. Okay. Cool. But uh, yeah. But then the question: uh, Will people actually use that? Do you think? Uh, I mean, w we need to tell people that that exists, and then we have to make sure uh, people. Yeah, because uh, today when someone asks how to uh, use Ruby on Debian, depending on where you ask, they will say use RVM and install everything from source, and. I don't know if if we care enough about people doing that or Yeah, okay. Uh, a driver, I don't know. I'm one one communication channel. I don't know how many people read it, but I do. The, there's someone like doing a Ruby weekly news letter. So, sorry, can you say that again? Someone is doing a Ruby weekly newsletter. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, and a driver tried to, um, I don't know, can come up with a, a series of blog posts and try to have that covered in the Ruby weekly news, saying, "Hey, yeah." Come on, yeah. we can use Ruby on Debian, or maybe uh, you could show, probably some could show that Ruby integration stuff, which is kind of neat, mm -hmm. uh, and is often completely overlooked. Uh, that's, <coughs> I mean, it's not, it's not, because because the, the DVD, I would not use it. So, uh, usually, what I do when I want to test Ruby package is take a live and use packages from the archive. Mm. So I'm not sure like embedding the packages, at least for my use cases, is not really interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. My my thinking about that was uh, I, I am subscribed to the Rails Brazil mailing list, and there is a lot of people who go there without any idea how to start using Ruby. So if those people have a DVD image to just install and Everything is there already. Instead of messing with RVM, RubyGen, everything, maybe that would be a good way to to get people coming. I mean, 
not to people coming to the Ruby world to, to know that they don't need to compile stuff from source. They can if they want to, but they don't need to. Yeah, so I, I don't have uh, hopes of converting the people who are already lost, but at least making the new people not go to the dark side would be nice. I mean, I, I don't know also how much I, I've I've yet to read a good, comprehensive, short critique of LVM, and why, you know, the problem it has. Because it, ha I mean, the, the approach of virtual end for Python or, or LVM is, I mean, problematic to me. I don't know. Yeah. I because of at least for upgrades and all. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I want to go into the into criticizing RVM. I think, I think uh, people who use operating systems that don't have proper package managers, RVM is perfectly fine for them. So I mean, it's maybe the the best solution for them. It's not for people who use Debian because oh. we do have a reasonable package manager. So uh, in the past, RVM did things like redefining the CD built-in in the shell. I think they don't do that anymore, but that's a detail. So that was, they did some things in a very invasive way. It's not, I think it's not the case anymore today, and I don't think we should go there. We just have to advertise the good points about Debian that people choose. Less, less trolling then. Yeah. Yes, is I would ask people to take a, uh, keep an eye on IRC because the guys are saying good stuff there and maybe we lose it because I can't follow everything. Uh, yeah. Um, just a comment I saw on the briefly on the screen when you switched to IRC. Someone was saying about tasks. Um, this one I find very important uh, that the Ruby team should have really good tasks a uh, task in the installer, oh, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Not just in the installer, I mean in general. If it then shows up in the installer, that's another thing. But so that you can, like, app can install task Ruby or whatever, or Ruby development, or Ruby on Rails or whatever, and you get all the stuff that you're supposed to get. Okay. Um, I didn't know you want you were uh, thinking about a live DVD or whatever, but having a task uh, would be much more uh, nicer than the images. So. Okay. And if you then want to do an image of it, then that's, yeah, very simple anyway. Okay, yeah, thanks for the suggestion. So we are close to the end, and <laughs> we have six minutes left. Uh, one question uh, from Lunar about how to handle jQuery embedding in docs. That's a very good question, and I think lots of packages have this problem. And uh, do you guys think we could uh, work out a way of having that handled automatically by gen to dev Per, I think you volunteered for the automatic documentation generation. Do you have an idea about that? I don't understand the multiple version since they're generated. Okay. I suppose just... Gunnar, can you explain about the multiple version and bit that you added? Because what I what I do now uh, manually in all my packages is to generate the docs with rdoc and then remove jQuery.js and link uh, and build no depend on libjs jQuery and link symlink that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's a mess because every documentation you generate now has that. So maybe maybe I think you. 
could try to look at that when you are working on the, the automatic documentation generation, then the code that does that already does this sim link juggling. And do, do you ship the doc in a different package or in the same package? I uh, broke them out to a separate package, but FTP masters thought that it was waste, so now they're merged into one package. Because then the problem is that we end up with having like, you know, a hundred pa Ruby package, binary package with, you know, that doesn't have anything related to jQuery at all, but which depends on jQuery just because of the doc, and that's pretty stupid. So it makes sense to have a separate doc package? At least more sense, maybe. Um, um, also, remember that you should never ever depend on jQuery, libjs jQuery, because otherwise, if you have recommends installed, it pulls in Apache and all the shit. So you really don't want that. Yeah, that's, yeah, so I think if you have a few minutes left, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, okay. Well, that's okay. I, uh, I have several application to package, which are Ruby application for mm -hmm. Kali Linux, and they tend to use bundle. Uh, is there any good documentation on the way to package those? Because right now I have, well, uh, uh, most of you probably know it, but bundle, uh, has strict version dependency because well, when you generate uh, trouble, you have a bundle uh, game file dot log or something like that, which has precise versions and that do not match what's in Debian. Mm -hmm. So up to now, uh, I use the ugly way of bundling the whole bundle in the package that I generate so that I don't have any issue. But uh, if I want to upload those to Debian, I will have to do it properly. Mm -hmm. But is there any definition of what properly yes. is in this case? So or are you just not using bundle for those? Okay. There is not really documentation on that yet. So the idea is that uh, you have to check whether the strict dependencies are sensible or not, because sometimes it's just because the person, the upstream author run Bando and then it got the dependencies that the person had installed at that time. And usually you don't want the code to depend on how the dependencies were installed. So what you can do is uh, test if, the, if it works with the packaged versions and then override the bundle, or even comment that out. If you if you if you already made sure that all packages are all dependencies are packaged, then you shouldn't you shouldn't need to use bundle, because uh, the main use case of bundle is of bundler is ha when you have multiple versions of stuff installed at the same time, and then bundle bundler will uh, figure out which gems to load. Yeah, so to make sure I understood, that but uh, well, this means uh, patching upstream code because well, well it's uh, not much, I guess, but only yeah, upstream I lines, but yeah, I think if upstream is un unreasonable, then uh, we don't have any other option. Okay. I I wish we we could. Uh, I mean, one one idea for auto package tests is to load those gem files and make sure. The dependencies that, that upstream intended are satisfied on Debian. So that if it's not, we know in advance, but then uh, you get to the problem of each upstream wants a different version of something, and we don't really package multiple versions of libraries. So yeah, I think I think we will we, we, we need to reach a, 
a good way of doing that in the future. So we, we I don't have an answer right now, but we should. Okay, I think our time is up and uh, we can finish here. Uh, thanks everyone, I think we went to the points that uh, needed attention and uh, if any items has no volunteer yet, we will try to find volunteers for them. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. <laughs>